Hey, what is up guys? Total War Chaos here. It has been a while since I made a video, but I'm back now and ready to create more content. So today I'll be showing you guys the top 10 mods that I'm currently using for the latest patch of E1.6.3 in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Starting off at number 1, the Better Time mod, which I've already mentioned previously, but that was quite a while ago, and I think it deserves another mention. It works slightly differently than before, but still largely the same adding an extra option at the bottom of the screen that allows us to fast forward more than what we're allowed to, which we can click manually or press the number 4 to extra fast forward. This is particularly useful when we need to travel from one side of the map to the other or needing to wait for certain events to happen like being released from jail or waiting to attack a hideout, poachers, etc. Number 2, Diplomacy. This mod grants us more features relating to diplomacy. Within the Kingdoms tab, we can see a newly added section called Faction. That shows us which clan is wanting the current ruler to abdicate by starting a civil war or to separate from the kingdom. It is something we can also participate ourselves. There are also new features such as non-aggression pact and alliances that can be formed, something that is surprisingly still not in the game. This mod also allows us to claim a fiefdom that will let the assault on, so no more sacrificing for nothing and instead will be guaranteed the land. Another feature we will notice after we declare war is the war report at the top of the screen and in it we will notice war exhaustion, it is calculated by casualties, fiefdoms being taken over, villages being raided and the duration of the war. When the kingdom that ends up with 100% war exhaustion, they will automatically surrender the war and most likely pay tribute. A system to prevent a war from going longer than it should. Number 3, Dismemberment Plus. I will say this is one hell of a mod. What it allows us to do is like the name suggests, it enables decapitation and the removal of enemy limbs if we are able to strike the killing blow in the head, arm, hand, leg or foot area with a cut damage type weapon. Whether this is realistic or not, that is totally up to the player to decide, but I think this is absolutely epic and definitely worth a try regardless. And I will show the rest of the footage for this mod of endless decapitation, so enjoy. Number 4, Kill Bandits Race Relations. This is a fairly simple mod that adds relationship gain to random notables in the nearby fiefdom when we defeat bandits. After defeating any bandits, we can see green text at the bottom left of the screen to show we have increased our relationship with nearby notables. Usually it increases by 1, but if it is a larger group, it can go up even higher. Number 5, My Little Warband. This is a mod that allows us to fully customize the troop tree to however we like, quite literally. In order to access the troop editor, we must enter a village or a town, go to recruitment, and right click on the unit to bring up its troop tree, and then simply shift left click on the unit to start customizing. Here we have many different options, from weapon types, to what armor to use, to changing the stats of the unit, etc. By default, tier 1 units will be limited to gear 1 tier above them, so up to tier 2. And for tier 2 units, they will be limited up to tier 3 gear, and so on and so forth. We can remove this limit at the top right corner, but it is something I would not recommend, as it is borderline cheating to have a tier 1 unit fully geared and have max stats. We can also make them a mounted unit, change the culture or the gender, etc. A simple way to get started is to use the copy template option at the top that allows us to copy any other unit of the particular tier within the game. We can also add what it can be upgraded to at the bottom left and then continue customizing until we are satisfied. If we want to recruit some of the local troops instead of the customized ones, we can switch back anytime by simply heading into a village to do so. Number 6, Party Screen Enhancements. This mod adds in various features to the party menu. At the top right corner we will see some new icons. The left one allows us to configure how we want to sort the units. I personally have the tier comparer and the unit type comparer active and I keep them both descending so that the best troops are at the top in order of infantry, archer and cavalry. We can also do the same for prisoners and garrison units. In the generals tab, I recommend having automatic sorting on. This basically keeps the party in a neat order every time the party tab is opened, like at the end of a battle. 
with the equally distributed upgrade option and recruit by default option enabled, we can then upgrade all units in one go without having to click on the individual units. Same with recruiting prisoners. This is probably by far the best mod in the list in my opinion, definitely a must have to the game. Number 7, Raise Your Banner. This mod adds in banners that will be carried by individual units on the battle, which can change the way on how it feels and plays out, making it that little bit more immersive, especially in large scale battles. We can adjust the settings in the config file to either increase or decrease the amount, what type of units should be carrying it, and what tier of units are allowed to carry it, etc. I personally use the value 7 for all the units as the default value is too high and would not add that many banners to the battlefield. With the value 7, I can have as many banners as possible without reducing game performance. Keep in mind that the lower the value, the more banners will be added. Number 8, Raise Your Torch. This mod is pretty similar to the previous one. It adds in torches that can be carried by units during night battles. Instead of the troop carrying it on their back like in Raise Your Banner, for this mod, the unit itself will have to carry the torch with their left hand, meaning they can only use one-handed weapons. This can be problematic if we have too many units carrying the torches, so we may want to limit it to lower tier units, and primarily infantry and cavalry, because otherwise, missile units will not be able to use their bows or crossbows. For me personally, I use the value 7 on infantry, as high of a value as possible on archers so none of them will be using a torch, and I make sure units tier 3 or higher do not use a torch at all, as to not reduce their combat effectiveness. Number 9, Siege Tower Fix. Well, 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 the time has finally come for the siege towers to actually function properly. Yes, you heard that right. Units will now actually make use of all three ladders available on the siege tower and they will all climb up at once. Whereas before, only a few men would climb up during any given time, granting the defenders an extremely easy time picking out the attackers. However, while this works quite well now for the siege towers, the siege ladder still not seems to be fixed. So keep that in mind when attacking. Number 10, Surrender Tweaks. This mod adds a nice change to how surrender works with enemies. When we heavily outnumber them, there will now be a text chance of surrender, high slash very high, popping up at the top of the screen. Meaning if we attack them, there will now be new interactions depending on what type of party we are attacking. For example, with a high chance of surrender, the bandits may offer to join our party, caravans, villagers and lords may pay for safe passage, and for a very high chance, they will straight up surrender. We will need quite an overwhelming number of units against our opponents if we want the very high chance to appear. For settlement sieges, their food supply will affect the chances of surrender. Once they run out of food, the longer the time passes, the higher the chance of them surrendering. So that is pretty much it for my top 10 mod list of the latest patch of 1.6.3. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of these mods and if you have any more to add as well. If you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more Bannerlord content. As always, thank you guys for watching, I will see you guys next time, goodbye.